trail. We found one. They were attacked. No. Safer to brave the wilds than trust in our magic. We should have... I should have... We can't leave them like this. We have to take them home. What if we're only making it worse? Maybe we don't belong here, but neither do they. Not out here in the wind and the cold. I heard the story about Varus's voice from beyond the grave. Of course, I didn't believe it, but Lacinia and her sister did. Perhaps there is something to the tale after all. I want to understand, so I'm going to borrow this for a while, if that's all right. You had every reason not to trust us. We came as trespassers, invaders. But I pray that in time, we will be more than that to you. That we will find a way to help your loved ones. And see that no more children are left to freeze alone in the snow. Thank you for your report. We shall inform the troops of these developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Allow me to go and speak with the ones at the Victor's Spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister, please do so. I am sorry to have put you through this. My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. So tell me, what else have we learned? As you may have already heard, 
We have succeeded in curing the members of the Popularis, Maxima identified. They have provided us with some intriguing insights into the current state of Garlemald. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. Fighting broke out in the capital, where Nerva's third legion clashed with the first, who remained loyal to Varus even after his death. Of course, even Imperial warmongers would balk at the idea of turning their shining city into a battleground. Like burning down the wood despite the wasps. Neither side would be so mad. Unless something or someone inflamed their animosity to such an extent that they could not help but act against their better judgment. It brings to mind events of the Gimlet Dark, does it not? The Emperor's sudden withdrawal from the front line, specifically. Nerva and his father, Titus, Varus's then political rival, took advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zenos had been possessed by a demon. Elidibus, what better way to disparage your enemies than with the truth or a close enough approximation? Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. While some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances, one after another, suddenly and suspiciously. Again, Elidibus. Like as not, he had a hand in it. No evidence was found to implicate Varus, certainly. Nevertheless, Titus, Nerva, and the Third Legion would have judged it a brazen attempt by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Sosgalvis is murdered. And Garlemald's own prodigal son, Gaius van Belsar, is named the murderer. Shortly thereafter, Nerva claims the right of succession. And in response, the First Legion claims the assassination was part of a coup d'etat orchestrated by Titus and Nerva. So no one is at fault, and everyone else is to blame. I should add that both parties received substantial financial backing, presumably to provide them with the means and encouragement to pursue a swift victory and that these contributions came from the self-same benefactor. I'd heard House Brutus had been filling the Third Legion's coffers, but the first as well. It would seem so. Though the Popularis determined that the First Legion received funds from a variety of organizations, all had connections to House Brutus. So Fandaniel, in the guise of Arsahi, was playing both sides against each other the entire time. The information we gained from my friends does not end there. One night, shortly after fighting broke out, the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. From that point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacius. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation, they somehow recall Emperor Varus giving them orders in their dreams. May the Tower of Babel stand as testament to the glory of Garlemald. This sounds awfully familiar. We have something to show you all. Varys spoke to them through this radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, that would be inexplicable. We are of one mind, then.
The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. A picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal, then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. No wonder Licinia kept it close. My friends, I must speak with you! A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Men, we think, but one who has not been made thrall. Thankfully, Magni restrained him before blood was spilled. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him questions. I think we do. Who do we have here? Garlians? Traitors to your homeland! Have you no shame? I am Lucia Junius, a Temple Knight of Ishgard. And you are? Julius Pianobanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me. We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from it. Like you, our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered most. This we know. And that is why we have come to offer you our aid, that we may unite against our common foe. Whether you believe me or not, those are the facts. Now, answer me this. Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. <clears throat> if it is supplies you seek, we would gladly share ours, or turn a blind eye while you leave with your spoils. I will not negotiate. My commander will determine how to deal with you and yours. If you wish to treat with him, I will take you, but no more than three. I don't much like the sound of that. But if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two of us and... Please allow me and Alizé to act as envoys. May I ask why? We have seen with our own eyes the hardships the Garleans face. How their futures and lives hang in the balance. It's not the warmest invitation, but it's an opportunity to prove our intentions true. Maybe not a chance to make things right, but a chance to make them better. I can see that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause, but you will proceed with the utmost care. A couple of children and what? A cell sword? Is this an insult? Not in the least. You will find that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. 
There are many dangers on the road ahead. I will need that back.
These are their chosen representatives.
Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir. I present to you our come up. Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. The First? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our Emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. Twas only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. But after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. So much blood has been shed, so much lost, all because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Is it because we do not share your faith? 
that we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Disparity is the root of discord, and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. That is why we Galians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up, as by dawn you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment, but there is one condition. Collar them. What are these? Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Even if he allowed himself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No, if he refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. Even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. You will be their warden. Take them away. Yes, sir.
finally escaped the watchful gaze of your keepers, have we? Don't react. You'll only draw attention to yourself. Just carry on as you are and listen. After you left with the Garlean lad, Lucia bade a few of our scouts follow you at a discreet distance. We observed you being led into the station, but decided against venturing inside. When you emerged some time later, and we saw that the twins were sporting Magitek collars, it was clear what had taken place. Now, as quietly as you can, tell me everything. The Legatus himself, eh? Now there's a surprise. This is also the first I've heard of a plan to join forces with the Tenth and storm the Tower of Babel. An interesting development, and perhaps the opportunity we've been waiting for. Our comrades back at the camp also received some rather promising news, but it's still too early to get our hopes up. For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. With luck, this will all be over soon. Until then. They had not gone far. We searched high and low, but no luck, I'm afraid. I might have guessed you'd be the only one to find anything. I wasn't expecting much to begin with. Eventually, there will be nothing left out here for us to safely salvage. For now, this will have to suffice. We should return to the station. gone hunting for ceruleum above ground. Brought back a king's ransom? Hardly. But thanks to these three, we have enough to last a little while longer. Well, well. It's not at all as I was expecting, these ones. But for savages, they seem positively docile. It's a poor attempt at humour. In all honesty, I'm grateful for your efforts. But even with another night of warmth, there are those among us who may not live to see the morrow. I trust your expedition was fruitful. Lord Quintus! Use what you procured to refuel the armor. But, sir, what about the heaters for the camp? The time for action is upon us. My men and I have matters to discuss. In the meantime, you are to wait here. Do not forget, you are being watched. The time for action. What did he mean by that? I can only speculate. Clearly something requiring their Magitek, given what we just heard. Whether they plan to utilize it now, or after they join with the Tenth, is another question.
they ever escape this cold? Return to and reclaim the idyllic spaces of which Eula spoke? Finished your war, Council? Alphino and Alizea are to stay here, as our prisoners. They will be released once your comrades have relinquished their supplies and withdrawn from Garlean soil. Until our terms are met, they will be detained at a separate location. After everything we've said and done, this is how you treat us. Our allies have but limited supplies. They may stave off cold and starvation for a short while, but what then? For now, For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. Get them out of here.
This is my home. Our home. At least it was until that night. I was with Lord Quintus when the capital fell, and thus spared. My family, who did not own a radio, were less fortunate. When dawn came, I made my way here. My parents, my little brother and sister, they were still inside. But they weren't themselves, and they... they tried to... promised to take them away from the capital that very morning, to somewhere safe, to hide until the fighting stopped. I promised. The Garlean flag bears a chain, the bonds between our countrymen. A red link at its center, the blood of the fallen, our loved ones who lived and died for Garlemald. But if she too fell, who would be left to remember them and their sacrifice? What enduring proof would there be that they were ever here? If we had turned to your gods, would they have saved us? I'm sorry, forget I spoke. We should go. No use. Believe me, I do not enjoy being here any more than you. But he wanted us to play along, so that is what we will do. Painfully so. Unbearably. I've been thinking about what Quintus said. About why no one would accept Garlean rule. Irreconcilable differences. When coexistence isn't an option, only conquest remains. Varys at Gimlet said much the same. Only by uniting the world beneath a single standard would we rid ourselves of the Asians. United, as one people, one race cleansed of imperfections. A cold and unforgiving vision. And when we fail to live up to their standards, what place is there for us in their world? But the truly sad, truly frustrating thing is how damnably similar it all is to the lofty ideals of Father and the Forum. Non-intervention. Always non-intervention. Protect our knowledge and our people, and to hells with the rest of you. And yet, I can see how it happened. Varys and Father looked to their elders for guidance and took their virtues as their own. But for this world was of their making. In who else could they place their trust? All of us lost in a sea of chaos. 
searching desperately for purpose and meaning. But it shouldn't just be an extension of another's. It has to be ours. It has to be. We all have a stake in this world. No one should be silenced. I won't deny that we lack the experience of people such as Father or Quintus. Perhaps they've come to see the world as a series of problems, and the most efficient way of solving them, to reduce everything to fundamental forms. A stone is a stone, a cloud a cloud, a flower no more than that. Simple descriptions that strip the subject of distinguishing characteristics. A man is a man, divided according to race, creed or allegiance, and to some, defined by such associations. Is that what you think? in my misbegotten youth. But what I believed wisdom was no more than aggressive ignorance. I've since learned to look beyond the banners and the politics, to see people as individuals with their own hopes and dreams. As for my dream of building a better world, well, every day I'm reminded that it is far more complex than I had ever imagined. But it only spurs me onward, to find the wisdom and the strength to see it through to the very end. All of our supplies and an immediate withdrawal, these are your conditions. Demands, and you forgot about the airship. Once again, you will leave one behind. It will be used to return the prisoners. Their collars will be removed prior to the exchange. So in the end, not even Father's expertly worded rhetoric could deter you from your chosen course. that I thought for a moment that it would. I've no love for violence, of course, but ours is a cause worth fighting for. I just wish he'd realize it too. Sometimes the only way to protect the ones you love is to take a stand, to refuse to suffer in silence. I want you to know I share your conviction. Whether it be on the battlefield or in the debating chamber, I won't back down. I guess what I'm saying is... You've found your own reason to fight. Yes. Yes, I have. God's willing, there will come a day when we can finally lay down our arms and there will be peace. But not until the Telophoroi have been defeated once and for all. And you, brother, will have a vital part to play. By your words and deeds, you'll lead the way. I pray I am up to the task. There'll always be naysayers. Those who think us fools for even trying. It's easy for learned elites to criticize earnest efforts and assert their moral superiority, all without offering alternatives. Not that their sophistry has ever wounded you. So stubborn and strong, stronger than you even know. Don't ever change, you hear me? If you stumble, I'll be there to catch you or give you a thick ear. Maybe both, for good measure. Thank you, Alize.
The scouts have secured Alizé and Alfino. Their collars were removed without complication as well. They report no casualties, not for their party nor the guards who will wake from their premature slumber in due course. It would appear the situation has changed. I propose new terms. We have information that will be of great interest to Lord Quintus, and I wish to speak with him in person. No. In the event you rejected our first proposal, we came prepared with a second. of the First Legion, proud servants of Garlemald, of the fallen Emperor Varys, shall safeguard these lands from the barbarian hordes until our countrymen return! Uh. Stop, both of you! This child may be the worst emissary I have ever seen. We received an urgent communication from the Grand Company of Eorzea. Envoys from the Imperial Army, led by members of the 10th Legion, came to Alamigo and requested an audience. They explained that their efforts to coordinate the reclamation of the capital with the aid of the 4th, 5th, 8th and 12th had ended in failure. Communication between most legions has broken down entirely. Most of the 10th's conscripts have deserted, leaving their forces severely depleted. That is why, unable to continue the fight on their own, they and their allies turned to the Grand Company of Eorzea for aid. Lies! Every word! It is the truth, and I have not finished. The Tenth has requested that we deliver a message to Lord Quintus. Have the ill stand down. You have been listening, my lord? What, what are your orders? Inform her that we will honor the Tenth's decision. Bereft of hope and now dignity. I release you from your duty, all of you. Take solace, your radiance, in the knowledge you are not here to witness our debasement. It was a grand, glorious dream we shared. Of a world united, of peace and prosperity. We are ghosts, you and I. Memories of days gone by. Bonds forged in blood that I will not see tarnished.
Quickly! We have to reach the station before it's too late. If there is still a chance that Quintus will agree to a truce, we must take it. I just hope we get there before he and his men do something rash.
Is that all of them? The last of those who agreed to join us, yes. We left heaters and provisions for those who wish to stay behind. They won't last forever, but hopefully they'll last long enough. For now, I think everyone's earned a rest. We'll see to those in need of medical attention, so take the others with you and get yourselves some hot soup. Warmth, at last. Marvellous, isn't it? All thanks to the resourceful machinists of Ishgard, I might add. On their behalf, I bid you warm yourself to your heart's content. Hold on. Your people might have scribbled a few things on a piece of parchment but it was our laments and smiths that put the bloody things together. Well, be that as it may, we single-handedly got the interior heating up and running again, didn't we? The hells you did! We were there every step of the way! We? You barely raised a finger to help, you ale-sodden reprobate! I did a damn sight more than you, you lily-livered bilge rat. Take that back. Make me. I will not stoop to your level. Here. At ease, man. There's nothing funny in it. I'm from Alamigo, but was a conscript until recently. Used to eat this with the officers. Apparently, it's adapted from a step recipe. This is my first time trying it, and I have to say, it's not half bad. Mmm. It's a bit too flavorful for my liking. <laughs> Perhaps compared to what you're used to. The little things that make life worth living, don't you think? This is not a dream, and yet... I felt the same way at the Dragon Song War's end. Every morning I would step outside and need to be reminded that it wasn't my imagination. That my world had been forever changed. And just as I had grown accustomed to the idea, 
Again, you change my world in ways I never thought possible. Were it not for you and your fellow Siams, the rifts between man and dragon and myriad tribes might never have been bridged. The Grand Company of Eorzea. The Ilsebad Contingent. We owe it all to you. We've shed many tears in recent days, of pain and sorrow, triumph and joy. I much prefer the latter. I'm honored to fight by your side. As an Eorzean and Galian both, I shall do all in my power to bring my peoples together. It is a remarkable achievement. Everything that I and the Popularis had hoped for, and more. Would that it had come sooner. Indeed. Too many are not here to see it. And yet, there is a warmth in my breast, as if they still share in this moment. Yes, I know what you mean. On a night like tonight, the wind and cold seem to pass me by. Fear our time is short. I shall begin the preparations. Now, it is time for you to awaken.
good morrow to you. Here, have a taste before it gets cold. Oh, but be sure to remove your helmet. Take a moment, too, to familiarize yourself with that borrowed flesh. So, how does it feel? I, for one, find those first moments within a new body to be most refreshing. We had a Magitech engineer by the name of Aulus to thank for this method of soul extraction and implantation. I believe the two of you met briefly in Alamigo. His was a rather sticky end, wasn't it? Thankfully, he was thoughtful enough to leave behind his mind jack technology. I took the liberty of making some improvements and selecting you as my esteemed test subject. and permit you to go on a righteous rampage instead of partaking in this delicious meal? I think not. I must say, I have gone to great lengths to reunite you with my lord. When I discovered that his friend was in this neck of the woods, I suggested inviting you over for dinner. He never deigned to respond, but I took his silence as a resounding yes. Oh my! Daddy is pleased his grumpy little boy has finally found his playmate. Position is in order. The Galian Empire has long outlawed all forms of religion. No gods to worship, no risk of summoning. Brilliantly simple. But people being people must turn to something or someone in their hour of need. Who then? Why, his radiance, the Emperor, of course. As you have observed firsthand, Garlemald has seen better days. The legendary Solasos Galvis, dead. The people cried out for salvation. Their earnest pleas, one might even call them prayers, a supplication united for the Empire to reclaim her former glory. And so their will did manifest, channeled through the corpse of none other than Emperor Varus himself. And lo, the savior was born, the embodiment of the Galian spirit, their anima. It calls to its subjects, compelling them to take up arms and fight. And just as the wealth and power gravitate towards the Empire's capital, so too does Ether from every corner of the globe. The towers with which you and your allies have been so preoccupied were created as an extension of Anima itself. An ingenious design. Would you not agree, my lord? Does the pursuit of prey you have bested before excite you? Of course not. Absent the challenge, the thrill, your prize is a hollow victory. Butchery.
Perhaps you think that to be the extent of my promise. I have no doubt fallen in your estimation since Alamigo. Fair enough. But do not let your disdain deprive you, deprive us, of an opportunity to craft an even more majestic moment of euphoria. I have been honing my craft as I set the stage for our reunion. Wheresoever there is suffering and despair, you appear to fulfill your duty as defender of this star. The chaos and destruction that my hordes have wrought are my gifts to you alone. At a loss for words? No matter. As you will learn, I have only just begun. Oh, will you not finish your meal? There is only one thing that can sate my hunger, and it would seem my friend has lost his appetite. I hoped this display of civility might prove an entertaining diversion, but clearly we are above such pretensions. While my lifeless body was in the possession of the Asia, I too claimed another's as my own. It was an enlightening experience to fight in an unfamiliar form. Flaws and failings in my technique were plain to see. Whence rises one's true strength? The flesh? The soul? Perhaps you should like to discover the answer for yourself. to greet your friends as you. I shudder to imagine what carnage he would wreak. We'd better hurry if we want to avert the bloodbath. You can thank me later for my generosity. Your camp, I believe. If I were to hazard a guess, I would say that you, the other you, is making his way there as we speak. Alas, 
This you will have to walk from here, or run if you can manage it. My lord would be cross if I made it too easy. Such ingratitude. I'd not squander this fighting chance. After all, you've obstacles enough to overcome. Right on cue. Tempered soldiers, with standing orders to kill those not sworn to anima. Under normal circumstances, you would make short work of them. But on this occasion, the odds are not so heavily stacked in your favor. diminished capacity. Nevertheless, it would perhaps be prudent to keep to the shadows, scurrying about like a rodent.
It is a miracle we were able to restrain the Tempered without suffering casualties. A welcome one. Arun, Senna, and the others have their hands full as it is. Thankfully, there are enough scales for everyone. And what of Eulus? His symptoms were particularly severe. They were, but others fared still worse, including some brought back from the Magna Glacius. As those in most desperate need take priority, it may be a while before he receives treatment. But rest assured that he will. In the meantime, we must find our missing friend. May the Fury guide you. Of all the bloody times for a disappearing act. Right when the first wave struck, we'd be fools to think it a coincidence. But where even to begin the search? No one saw him leave in the chaos, and we've no trail to follow. While I know full well he can handle himself, I worry all the same. Ah, speak of the devil. Well, time to call off the search. <laughs> Case closed. That's him. Over there. I would appear so. Thou art struggling to perceive his presence. I am. Perhaps, in the aftermath of the wave, there is some residual effect interfering with my faculties, but... Where have you been? We've been worried sick! And now, now. All's well that ends well. Are you all right? Who are you? run its course, and back to your own bodies you must go. But where are my manners? You have all traveled so very far, and I have yet to pay my respects. Though in my defense, I was ill-prepared to receive so many uninvited guests. As such, preliminary entertainments were in order. A handful of tempered soldiers to hamper your progress. Refugees to command your attention while I siphon the ceruleum from the shadows. Particularly effective. Charitable souls that you are, you bent over backwards to aid them. Heedless of the delay, predictable to a fault, and so my plan approaches completion unhindered. Anima will soon have absorbed the requisite amount of ether, and then shall come the spectacle to end all spectacles. The 
eldest and most powerful of primals will awaken, and all shall bear witness to the final day. The gods themselves will be my meal. Your dear companions my dessert. Upon this world I'll feast, and death shall follow in my wake. All your hate, all your rage, you will render unto me. For upon thy life's reel wind too many threads of fate, power, wheel enmeshed with woe. More terrible still is the attrition wrought upon thy companions, as they are swept up in the storm of thine existence. Take heart and protect them well. They will be your strength and your salvation. Thank goodness. He's awake. I am pleased to report you are very much alive. Everything in working order? That's a relief. Oh, and before I forget, thanks for coming to our rescue. Given recent events, I would be surprised if you weren't feeling a bit poorly. A hearty meal and a long rest would be my recommendation under normal circumstances, but these are anything but. If Van Daniel's boasts are to be believed, we must act quickly. Once you've blown away the cobwebs, we can discuss preparations for our assault on the Tower of Babel. <laughs> 